Lesson number four: Ethics and safety measures in computing. Part four. This session includes explanation and then exercise at the end of the explanation. So let's begin the session by talking about cyber crime. A cyber crime is an illegal activity that's done through internet. Example: identity theft, where somebody can steal your email ID or password. and use it to send fake emails to people containing false information about virtually any product or winning a lottery etc then there are credit card account thefts internet frauds like ordering goods in your name extracting mobile phone contacts etc forgery that is imitating which means making a fake copy of documents currency and objects of other people with bad intentions harassing others and mischief mongering which is playing mischief by sending threatening messages all of which come under the jurisdiction of indian penal code or ipc which means all such crimes committed within the territory of india are punishable under ipc so cyber crimes can be divided into not just one two but three main categories one is crime against an individual two crime against property and three crime against an organization or society let's know more defamation is defined as a communication that intends to harm or damage the reputation of a person business product government religion or even nation Now let's look at the various safety measures which should be undertaken while using computer or internet. First, minors should always surf internet under the supervision of the parents. Two, parents should decide and suggest age-appropriate website to their children. To minimize the chances of attack of hackers and crackers, one should use strong passwords. A strong password consists of at least six characters that are a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. Please remember, more the number of characters, stronger the password. Four. to avoid losing data privacy while transmitting the data from one site to another encryption can be implemented encryption is a process of transforming data into an unreadable code the result is an encrypted file which is transferred over the network at the receiving end it undergoes a process called decryption which converts the encrypted information into readable form 5 set up your computer for automatic software and operating system updates to make your system robust 6 taking regular backup is the primary and more reliable method of data protection 7 ignore unwanted and strange emails and be cautious of attachments links and forms in emails that come from unknown people 8 make use of firewall firewall is a security system 
that prevents unauthorized people to access your system and network. It can either be hardware or software or a combination of both. It is implemented on the gateway of a network and follows a specific set of rules defined by the user or the network administrator. Based on these rules, it controls the incoming or outgoing network traffic. Know the fact, keylogger programs are used to check users' keystrokes and get important information such as passwords, etc. Digital Footprint As you know, footprint is the impression left by a foot or shoe on the ground or a surface. Similarly, a digital footprint is the information about a person that exists on the internet because of his online activity. This is the information transmitted online like filling a registration form, email attachments, online shopping, commenting on a social networking site, uploading videos and digital images etc. All of which leaves a trail of personal information available to others. This information gets logged in a database. A digital footprint is also known as digital dossier. Digital footprints can be categorized into active and passive data traces. The active ones are those data traces which the user leaves intentionally. The email, chats, Facebook and blog posts are some of the ways in which a user can create active digital footprints. Passive data traces connected to an individual are generated by others or gathered through the user's online activities without his knowledge. Few activities which create passive data traces include surfing the sites for searching information, online shopping, etc. Let's talk about the implications of digital footprint. As discussed earlier, all the online activities leave behind the footprints or information traces. These information traces could be either used positively or negatively. So before indulging in any activity, one should think over its outcomes. Follow these guidelines while being online. First, Never post any silly or abusive comment. Two, tune the privacy settings of your social media account in a way that only your family or friends can see your posts and pictures. Three, do not log on to an inappropriate website. Four, avoid accepting the friend requests from strangers, people you do not know. And finally, here's a piece of advice. Be vigilant and extra cautious while being online as your carelessness or ignorance may generate a negative digital footprint which could spoil your reputation. It can even affect your chances of getting admission in a prestigious college or even getting a job.